Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to use our 32 ounce kit of amazing clear cast, a couple of colors, and some other things to make two canvases, three coasters, and a clock in one shot. Let's get started. Okay, so like I said before, we're going to use this 32 ounce kit of our amazing clear cast, uh, and we're going to use all of it today, but we're going to get a lot out of it. We're going to do both of these canvases, these three coasters, and we're going to use this pizza pan to go ahead and do that clock. So. First things first is the safety. Be safe, guys. Put some gloves on, put some glasses on. Do you look a little dorky? Maybe, does it matter? No, because why? You're safe, that's what matters. So first thing I'm gonna do is prep this area. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a few sheets of wax paper lined up uh, next to each other, and I'll tape them down to the surface, and that's gonna be my work area. Now we're doing all the 32 ounce kit. All the 32 ounce kit is gonna get us all this stuff, so you need a mixing container that's gonna be big enough. I've got this one here, which we love. These are these multi-mixes. You've got it right there, 32 ounces right on the side of the bucket. And there's also a 16 mark, so you've got one bottle and the second bottle, easy to measure. So our coasters and our pizza pan, which is gonna be our clock, work perfectly on the ground, but these canvases we wanna elevate a little bit. There are some mixing cups that come inside the kit these work great to elevate canvases when you're doing a pour like this. You could also use paper cups if you've got paper cups, or you could also use paint pyramids, right? Those are those orange looking kind of fancy triangles that you see people elevate with. Whatever works, it's whatever you have, this is completely doable with what you have at home. All right, we've got our canvases elevated, pizza pan, coasters, we're prepared. We got our parchment paper down, we're safetyed up. It's time for the fun part, it's time for the mix. So these are 16 ounce bottles. You've got the A side and the B side in. Now today we're gonna to be doing this project with all the contents of both of these bottles. So I'm not super worried about measuring. When you are measuring though, you're just gonna to wanna to put equal parts by volume for the amazing clear cast. Now the A side will look blue in the bottle. Don't worry, it's clear once you mix it all together. All right, it's everybody's favorite time mixing time. Here's a common mistake a lot of people make when they're doing mixing, is they just kind of grab the stick and they just really quickly just do really small circles and they're like, I'm good to go, that's good enough. You wanna make sure you're scraping the sides and scraping the bottom of the bucket. For anything that's clung to the side, we wanna get all of it integrated. So scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, fold it over, and kind of buckle up. All right, so I'm, let's say, about halfway through the mixing process. It's been about a minute and a half, maybe two, and I want you to see this here. So there's a lot of swirls in this mixture still, and it's a little cloudy. So I'm gonna make sure to keep mixing until there's no swirls and things are completely clear. A couple, maybe two to three, maybe even four more minutes, and we'll be good to go. All right, there we go. Now it's clear. We've mixed for about a total of four and a half, four minutes. It's gonna depend when you're mixing based off of how warm it is in here versus how cold it is in here. So the warmer, the easier, and the faster it mixes together, the colder, the little bit longer it's gonna take. So, all right, let's talk color. So we've got our epoxy mixed. I've got a couple paper cups over here I'm gonna dose some color into, and that's gonna be our blue-green. You're gonna like that one, I promise. And our deep red. These two together look awesome. Now, how much color do we wanna have versus how much do we wanna leave clear versus how many, look, all of those decisions, all of those fears, that's completely up to you. You can do whatever you want. There's no wrong answer right now. I'm gonna use a good amount of color, but I'm gonna keep a lot clear. I think it's gonna show you a little bit of a different effect that you can get with some epoxy. I'm gonna pour in about, I'm gonna say that's a third of the paper cup there in each one of these. Cause I'm using these colors mostly for accent and not necessarily for the full body of each one of these pieces. I want the majority to kind of be that beautiful clear. So I've got a lot left over of clear. I'm gonna use all of that for sure. And I've got these colors here, they're gonna pop. This is one of my favorite parts is mixing up these powders. Oh, they're so beautiful. Now it's time for the fun part, all the pouring. I'm gonna start with this pizza pan here. This is just a mainstay, I think is the Walmart brand or whatever. 
pizza pan. It's just a non-stick surface. I'm not even gonna use any release agent or anything. This actually pops right off super easily, no problem. So I'm gonna start with a good amount of clear on this pizza pan. It's gonna feel like it's filling up the whole thing. That's okay. We're gonna spark it up with a little bit of this color. Now I'm gonna move right over with this clear to our coasters and dole out a little bit of that as well. Again, I'm using this clear as like a really cool base to let these colors pop off from. And then a little bit of the clear on our canvases. Just right in the middle. That'll give us a fun effect later too. Our clear has been added to everything. We can set that to the side. Now we're gonna make these really fun. Here we go. I'm just gonna use this wooden stick that I have here. I'm gonna kinda get a glop of this really cool blue green and I'm just gonna go around and just make these really cool organic lines throughout this pizza pan. It looks really nice. You can leave these lines just like this, kind of swirly and unique, or you can mix them up. That's up to you, you get different effects. All right, real quick, refresh mix on the red, and then right back over, I'm gonna do the same thing. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit more blue to this. Cool, I feel great about that. Coasters, the same thing. I'm definitely gonna mix these. I wanna show you some cool stuff that you could do here, but I'm gonna, again, use that little small wooden stick, and then kind of do some fun organic going around. And this is why we put down that parchment paper. I could actually not worry if I go over the edge a little bit. That's totally fine. It's not gonna stick to the parchment paper. It's not gonna mess up your surface. Now you can do whatever patterns and swirls you want. That's completely up to you. I'm just doing what, what feels good right now. I did a lot of red on the clock, so I'm gonna ease up on the red with the coasters. I'm imagining that this is all, let's say three sets of items that live in the same room. It's kind of like a cohesive unit. All right, so I've got my red in my coasters here. I'm just gonna take one of the stir sticks and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it into the middle of the epoxy and I'm just gonna start swirling it around. This one is really fun. It re creates like kind of these organic swirls that you couldn't get if you just leave the epoxy kind of lined out like we did on the clock. Now these coaster molds have grooves in the top, kind of little ridges, so I'm making sure that I'm kind of poking the stick in there to get some color in there too. All right, coasters are done. The clock, I'm feeling like I'm gonna leave it. I like that, it's kinda cool, and we'll see how it spreads out over time. So what am I gonna do now? I've lost my stir sticks. Not a problem. We're actually gonna just go ahead and use these cups, and we're gonna pour these organic lines across the canvases here. Again, parchment paper laid down, important here. So look at this, when it gets a little, little thin like that, I just like to do a little bit higher, and then I do some fun concentric circles like this. Adds a lot of extra texture to the canvas. All right, I like that red. Now let's watch what happens with the blue. Look at that. So some of our fun blue-green pigment here actually pulls out two different colors, it feels like. So you go from two powders to three colors that are kind of shining through the canvas and even on the clock too. It's so much fun. We've got our epoxy all done. We maybe swirl the clock later if we love our coasters. But these canvases, the epoxy is not touching the edge. So what do we do? Well, there's a couple options. We could grab a blow dryer and spread out the epoxy that way, but I feel like we should have a little bit more fun, right? We've laid down this parchment paper for goodness sake. Let's use it. So we're gonna tilt these canvases and I'm just gonna let it run to the corner. I'm gonna let it drip over. Again, we've got parchment paper laid down, no big deal. And this is where that clear that I put down first really comes in handy. Now you've got canvas coverage and spreading of colors, but you're not losing all this extra resin that way. Look at that. So fun, so unique, so different. I could do this a thousand times and I'd never come up with that same canvas. It's too hard to recreate. So now you can real quick look at the difference between the untilted canvas over here and what happens when actually when we do it and we tilt it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, this one. Awesome. Now epoxy self-leveling. So all of this is gonna even itself out, but you'll notice on these canvases, the edges of them need a little bit of coverage. Well, that's what this drip down here is perfect for. So we're just gonna take our finger kind of pick up some of this excess epoxy that's on the parchment paper, and we're just gonna kind of coat it on the sides. 
easy way to get everything covered. And just like that, we're done pouring and mixing. It's perfect, everything looks fantastic. There's a little bit of air here, so there's a couple things you can do to get rid of that air. You could use a torch, uh, but you might not have that available. Alcohol spritz, a really fine alcohol spritz works as well, or a heat gun also will get a lot of that air out. I wouldn't recommend a blow dryer or a hair dryer. You're gonna move a lot of epoxy that way. So a little bit of alcohol spritz on a fine mist or a heat gun or a torch, we'll get it all out. I've got the torch, so I'm gonna use the torch. All right, now we're gonna let this sit overnight and we'll come back pop out these coasters, pop out that clock, and get assembling. All right, so it's been overnight, we're back, and we're ready to actually see the results of all this hard work we've done. So I'm gonna start, let's start with the, the clock here. There's a little bit more work to be done here. This is that pizza pan, right? We didn't use any mold release, we didn't do anything like that. I wanna show you how easy this comes off. It's just a little bend, just kinda of loosen it up, you can hear it separating. That's it, and look at that. We used a lot of clear so you can see like all the transparencies of this, but you get this really fun, cool pattern with these two colors. It looks really kind of organic. It's, I love this one a lot. We're gonna finish this in a second. Let's keep demolding real quick. Let's go to the coasters. A Little bit of resin spillover. This is where that uh, wax paper works wonders. Pops right off. So these are those silicone molds that I'm talking about. All you do is just peel them away from the sides. Just kind of take your time, work around. And there you go. Look at that. Beautiful. There's a lot of different colors too. I love the powders that we chose. You get different colors at different angles with that cool blue green. It's a lot of fun. Nice part about these silicone molds is the flashing comes right off, no big deal. And then we're just kind of gently pulling, working it around and then it comes right out. There we go, look at those coasters. So cool, so beautiful, guaranteed. Gonna be a conversation starter when your guests go to put their drink down on it. Now we've got our canvases here. We've put them on those little, those little cups and they come right off no problem. Look at that, beautiful, one of one, gorgeous. Now we should talk about the back of these. There's some drips here. These sand off easily. In fact, some of them actually tear off too. So no big deal here, don't worry about those. A little bit of sandpaper to get them down and your painting will hang flush, no worries. Now if you don't wanna deal with sanding, all you have to do is every half hour or so after you've poured your canvas, come around with a glove and just kind of wipe those drips off of the back. It'll start to gel up after that 45 minute open time is done, then you'll have no sanding to do afterwards. All right, now let's finish this clock. I grabbed just some clock parts off of Amazon. Whatever clock parts you get, just follow the instructions for those and you'll have no problem here. It's about drilling a hole in the center, assembling each piece step by step. Now we've got this assembled. All we need is a AA battery. And we're good, there it is. Completely assembled, ready to go, ready to tell the time. So there you go, completely done, completely assembled. But I did another set over here that I want you to see too. Same colors, same powders, just a little bit of a different technique, different ratios of the colors, you get completely different results. So these are a couple ways that you could do these three things with just a 32 ounce kit. From countertops to bathroom vanities, tumblers, jewelry, photo encapsulations, the possibilities truly are endless. Well, we hope you enjoyed this. Don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions or any concerns. We're here for you with whatever you need. Till next time.